Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiul. I work as a lecturer of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Hope someone finds this helpful. Today's topic is on transplantation and graft rejection. This is the ninth lecture of our immunology lecture series. In this lecture, we will learn about the definition of transplantation, the types of transplant or graft. We will also talk briefly about solid organ allograft rejection and there we will discuss about acute, chronic and hyperacute allograft rejection and towards the end of today's lecture we will also talk briefly regarding the two pathways of allograft rejection. Okay? A lot of topics, so let's begin. First question, what do we mean by transplantation? Or how can we define transplantation? As written in your textbook, transplantation is the process of taking cells, tissues or organs from one individual and placing them into usually a different individual. Note that here I had said usually because as we will see, there is an exception. There is one type of transplantation that is called autograft where we transfer tissue from one body site into another body site in the same individual. So that's why I had mentioned usually to different individual in this definition. Okay, so transplantation is the process of taking cells, tissues or organs from one individual and placing them usually into a different individual. Now always remember that transplanted cells, tissues or organs are often referred as graft. So in this slide we are summarizing the types of transplant or the types of graft. They are autograft, syngenic graft or isograft, genograft and allograft. So now let's talk about these various types of transplant one by one. What do we mean by autograft? Here there is transfer of self tissue from one part of the body site to another part in the same individual. Since we are transferring tissue from one part into another part in the same individual, so it is obvious that it is always permanently accepted. A very common example of autograft is skin grafting in the same individual. Moving on to syngenic graft or isograft, here there is transfer of tissue between genetically identical individuals. Since the individuals are genetically identical, so this type of grafting is almost always accepted. Example, the transplantation that is done between monozygotic or identical twins. Moving on to xenograft, what do we mean by xenograft? It is transfer of tissue between different species. It is usually unsuccessful except under certain unusual circumstances. And we can see an example that is graft of a baboon heart into a human. What do we mean by allograft? transfer of tissue between genetically non-identical members of the same species. Most of the transplants performed are in fact allografts. Allografts are usually rejected unless the recipient is given immunosuppressive drugs. For example, kidney transplant from one individual to another individual is a very common example of allograft. So now that we have talked about the various types of grafts, now let's move on and talk about solid organ allograft rejection. There are three types. They are acute allograft rejection, chronic allograft rejection, and hyperacute allograft rejection. So first, let's talk about acute allograft rejection. It is also called primary or first set reaction. What is the mechanism? This is cytotoxic T lymphocyte mediated. Initially, the vascularization of the graft is normal. 
However, in 11 to 14 days, there will be marked reduction in the circulation of the graft and there will be also infiltration of mononuclear cells, that means lymphocytes, in the graft. Now, if a recipient has rejected a graft by first set reaction and then a second set of graft is transplanted from the same donor, it will be rejected in an accelerated fashion and this is called second set or accelerated reaction. So always remember that uh, what do we mean by second set or accelerated reaction? First the recipient has rejected a graft by first set reaction but we still transplanted a second set graft from the same donor and that got rejected even faster. And this is known as second set or accelerated reaction. So now let's talk about chronic allograft rejection. A graft that has survived acute rejection can still undergo chronic rejection months to years after the engraftment. The mechanism is delayed type hypersensitivity and antibody mediated. The main pathological findings will be atherosclerosis of vascular endothelium of the graft. Now I have two separate videos on atherosclerosis so you can also look into that video after watching this video for more information about atherosclerosis. Now always remember chronic allograft rejection can occur even after matching the human leukocyte antigen or HLA of the donor and recipient. And why will that thing happen even after we have matched HLA of the donor and recipient? It will happen due to presence of minor histocompatibility antigens and those minor histocompatibility antigens are not matching and that's why they are creating problem. Chronic allograft rejection does not respond to treatment and therefore it carries a poor prognosis. Now the third type of allograft rejection is called hyperacute allograft rejection and as the name implies here the rejection will occur very quickly. Typically this type of rejection will occur within minutes to hours. The mechanism is by preformed antibodies which are anti-ABO and or anti-HLA antibodies. Now preformed anti-ABO antibodies of the recipient will react with ABO antigens that are located on the surface of endothelium of the graft. And there will be spasm and occlusion of the vessels supplying the graft and this will result in loss of blood supply in the graft. And this type of graft will appear pale in color and this is also known as white graft reaction. So there will be spasm and occlusion of the vessels supplying the graft and uh, since they are getting less blood supply so they will become pale and this type of graft is therefore also known as white graft reaction. The last topic that we will talk about today is regarding the pathways of allograft rejection. There are two pathways. One is called direct pathway and the other one is called indirect pathway. In the direct pathway, what will happen here? The donor's antigen presenting cells or APCs will migrate from the graft to a nearby secondary lymphoid tissue and there they will present peptide in association with donor class 1 or class 2 MHC proteins. Now I have two separate videos on MHC molecules so you can also look at those videos to know more about MHC proteins. So what is happening here? A very interesting thing is happening here. Can you see? Yes. Here we can see that the donor's antigen presenting cells are taking extra work and they are migrating to nearby secondary lymphoid tissue because they are thinking that they are still inside the donor's body. 
However, they are now inside a different body. They are now inside the body of the recipient. So what will happen? The recipient's immune system will not recognize these molecules, right? So the donor class 1 and donor class 2 MHC molecules will be recognized as foreign by the recipient's T lymphocytes. Presence of donor MHC protein will make the peptide MHC complex of the donor non-self to the recipient's T cell. What do we mean by this line? This means that even if the donor's antigen presenting cell are presenting the recipient's antigen, due to the fact that it is presented by donor MHC molecule, so the entire peptide MHC complex will be considered as foreign by the recipient's T cell regardless of the peptide that is bound with the donor MHC complex. Now, when there is direct recognition of non-self HLA protein by the recipient's T cells, this will trigger polyclonal activation of a larger percentage of recipient T cell clones. And in your textbook, you will see that uh, up to 10% of recipients' T cells may become activated due to the presence of these non-self or foreign HLA proteins. And if the non-self HLA proteins are class 1, they will activate CD8 positive T cells to become cytotoxic T lymphocytes or CTLs. And those cytotoxic T lymphocytes will then go to the graft or we can say that they will infiltrate the graft and by going there they will start killing the graft cells that are expressing the same class 1 protein. Now if the recipient's T lymphocytes recognize donors class 2 HLA protein that will trigger activation of recipient's CD4 positive T cells those activated CD4 positive T cells will liberate various types of cytokines that will also enhance CD8 positive T cells activation. Moving on to the indirect pathway of allograft rejection, what is happening here? Here the recipient's antigen presenting cells will present the donor's protein. In order to do that, the recipient's dendritic cell have to enter the graft and there they will have to take up the donor's HLA proteins that were found there because a lot of graft cells become damaged and the HLA molecules are shed from those damaged cells. So the recipient's antigen presenting cells will have to migrate to the graft there they have to collect or uptake the donor's HLA protein. Then they have to take those foreign proteins to a nearby draining lymph node. And there they will present those foreign HLA proteins to the immune system. And that will ultimately activate the adaptive immune response. And always remember, as time passes, the antigen presenting cell of the donor that were present in the graft will gradually reduce and they will be replaced by recipient's antigen presenting cell. So therefore we can say that when we were talking about acute rejection, it could have been contributed by both direct and indirect pathway. But when we are talking about chronic rejection, always remember that it is the indirect pathway that is primarily responsible for chronic rejection. So this concludes our lecture on transplantation and graft rejection. I hope this video was helpful. If you like my videos, do comment, share, subscribe and let me know. And for my students, I will also recommend you to go through your textbooks to know more. Okay, that's all for today. Until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.